Good morning. I'm happy to welcome you to our online worship for the Aurora, Bradshaw, and Phillips United Methodist Churches. I'm Pastor Michelle Reed, and I'm happy to welcome you this morning. However you are watching, whether that's the Aurora website, our YouTube channel, or any of our Facebook pages, glad you are watching worship this morning on a Pentecost Sunday. That is the birthday of the church. At least that's what I like to call it. Pastor Greg likes to call it Pentecost Pie Sunday, and you know what we'll be having later on uh, on this Pentecost Sunday. We'll definitely be celebrating with Pentecost Pie. A couple of announcements as we get started. First, I want to announce that we are hosting a virtual Blessing of the Animals service this Wednesday, June 3rd at 7 p.m. Now, how this is going to work is that you would contact the church, myself, Pastor Greg, or call the church office here in Aurora and let us know that you want to participate. I'll send out a Zoom link uh, that for that particular time. And then when you connect with Zoom, you and your pet, whether that's a llama, a cat, a dog, a turtle, whatever you have, um, then we will admit you one at a time into the meeting room. We will have you introduce yourself, introduce your pet, and then we will bless your pet and then move on to the next person. The whole thing will also be live on Facebook so that you can watch at the same time and see all of the people that are coming on with their pets to be blessed. And then that will be available uh, for later viewing as well. But we hope that many of you, especially our kids and our families will be joining us for that online Blessing of the Animals event. Also, this coming Sunday, June 7th, the first Sunday in June, is a traditional Sunday for sharing communion in our United Methodist churches. And what we'd like to offer this month is a drive-through communion time. Here's how it will work. Watch our regular online worship service that will be posted on Sunday morning, June 7th. At 10.15 that same morning, we will have a live Facebook Live blessing of the sacraments, the elements, and consecration of those elements. And then beginning at 11 o'clock in Aurora, you can drive through the east parking lot and um, we will be there to uh, you drive through off of A Street and then exit out past the community garden. We'll have some folks there to direct you. And uh, as you come through, we'll ask how many you have in your car with you that need elements, and then we'll have a table set up. We'll be able to put the elements on the table, and you can take those for your family or for those of you who are driving through. In Phillips and Bradshaw, you will be driving through uh, the parking areas or right along the front of the Phillips Church at 1 o'clock in the afternoon. Same procedure, watch the worship service and then watch the online blessing of the elements, the great Thanksgiving prayer, and then come and drive through. The Phillips and the Bradshaw churches will be at one o'clock. We hope you'll take advantage of that more personal, we hope, way of sharing communion with you as we begin to phase into a more personal and um, contact-worthy worship times together. So now I want to uh, let you know uh, another exciting thing that's happening as we're moving into a new new stages of worship together. The praise team from here at the Aurora United Methodist Church was able to gather and record some songs together. It was an interesting gathering. I'll show you a picture of what we what it looked like. As you can tell, we were spread all throughout the sanctuary, safe distancing from one another as we sang our songs. And then uh, Pastor Greg recorded us and put the video together so that we could offer you some worship songs uh, from our traditions. And that's one of the ones we'd like to open with for today. Our worship time together is Better Is One Day. Um, better is one day in your courts, Lord, than any elsewhere. And so that's an important thing to remember during this time of isolation, that even when we are in our different homes and different places watching worship, it is still a day in your court when we come together to praise you. Join us as we sing.
Church Good News. I'm not John Krasinski on ABPBN, the Aurora Bradshaw Phillips Broadcasting Network. First in the news, there has been a report from Jerusalem that a large crowd of people have gathered and have witnessed an incredible display of holiness. Our roving Reporter Rover Clover is out there now to bring us a special report. What have you seen, Rover? Hello, Not John. As I speak, people are still arriving. I hope to find out why they're here. Ma'am, can you tell us why you're here? Ah, sí. Yo vine aquí para el Festival de Pentecostes y no podía creer cuántas personas hay. Increíble! Of course! Pentecost is a big day of celebration for the Hebrew people. Ma'am, can you tell me what you've heard? Mais oui! Tout le monde l'a entendu! La bruit d'un grand vent! Rushing wind? This is getting weird. Sir, sir, can you tell me what you saw in all of this. Oh, Kai Offerson, Otis 
Sky Mel Somanai Glossai Ose Puroskai Ekathison Death and Ekaston Utoitan. Flames resting on them? Lucky no one got hurt. Sir, can you tell me what is going on here? Ah, the younger Jesu sprechen an der Sprachen, aber ich kann alles verstehen, was sie sagen. So you could understand them speak in a language completely foreign to you. That's miraculous. Over, I noticed that the people you talked to were speaking other languages. Spanish, French, German, and if I'm not mistaken, classical Greek. I was surprised you could understand them all. I didn't know you knew so many languages. Actually, not John. I don't speak anything but English, but I understood them perfectly. Must have something to do with these holy spirit flames all over our heads. That was some great roving, Rover. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we have heard it from several witnesses. The Holy Spirit is among us. Before we sign off, let's check in with Pastor Michelle with the latest weather. Hey, Beth Ann, how's the weather today? Pretty good. Okay. This is not John Krasinski, and that, my friends, is some church good news. have the opportunity as a community of faith to come together and care for one another through our prayer time. I want to share a, a couple out loud that um, I have been shared that have been shared with Greg and I and then I want to invite you as well to put your prayer concerns or joys in the comment sections of any of our social media or to call the church or email us or text us. We're happy to share any of the prayers that uh, you would like to be shared with the whole community um, on our Sunday morning videos. So I invite you to be a part of that time. This morning, I'd like to mention a few, as I said earlier, one of those would be for Betty Mabin and her extended family. Her nephew was tragically killed in a car accident in the Central City area. So I would invite you to pray for the family through their grief and loss at that heartbreaking uh, accident. I would also ask you to pray for John and Evelyn May. John's sister passed away and uh, for their extended family as well as they deal with the, the grief that brings into that is brought into their family uh, unit. Prayers lifted up again for Barb Pinkelman as she continues to struggle with her health uh, during this time, even more so, I think, she has been admitted once again into the hospital, and so please pray for Barb. Also, a joy that I get to share for Todd and Melinda Vlieger that they have had uh, twin baby girls this last week, and so invite you to share in the joy of new birth in the midst of this time, bringing us all hope and inspiration uh, for a bright future. Again, I'd invite you to share your concerns and joys with us anytime and invite you now to a time of prayer. I'll begin with a moment of silence. Loving God, you bring us together in so many ways, known and unknown to us. Though may, we may be apart physically, our hearts are connected together. We are bound together in your spirit with your grace and through your son, Jesus Christ. And we ask that you would continue to help us to know our bonds, know even more fully how we are connected and how important it is that we rely on one another during this time. God, for the times that we feel blessed and have great thanksgiving in our heart and are feeling the love and joy that we have for one another, even in the midst of this time, I would ask that you continue to strengthen those of us when we get to feel that way. Also continue to comfort and strengthen those of us who begin to feel let down. 
to be overwhelmed with grief and stress and loss, to feel like the bottom has fallen out and that there's no place to go but down. God, help us to know and be able to see your light. Even if it seems far away, God, it gives us something to cling to, something to hope for, knowing that you are there with us, walking among us and even before of us laying a path that we can follow when we are close to you and your son, Jesus Christ. God, bind us together, especially as a nation, in our communities, and in our families. God, we feel much stress and pain over the tragedy that racism can bring into our lives. We are heartbroken when there is extreme violence and cruelty that is made, um, brought to the forefront of our lives. God, we know that it happens daily, not only in our country, but in countries all over the world and our hearts break. And we cry to you, Lord, have mercy on us. For those things that separate us, God, break down barriers, break down walls, help us to see one another through the eyes of love, through the eyes of Jesus Christ, who truly saw us for who we are, human beings created, loved, and accepted by God. We ask God that you would heal our wounds, bless our hearts, and help us to know more and more the love that you have for us so that we can share it with one another. We ask that you would especially be with those who are grieving, be with our communities who are struggling, be with those who feel alone and isolated. Bring us all together back again into your, uh, into your gracious presence and under the strength of your everlasting arms. We are so blessed to have one another, and we are blessed to have our Savior, Jesus Christ, who has given a sacrifice that we might know what it means to walk the breadth and depth of love until its very end. We are willing to walk in his way. And so we offer the prayer that he taught us, saying together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. I invite you to continue to sing uh, with us. This, uh, our singers today are provided by the praise team. As I mentioned earlier, I invited them to sing along with this old, old hymn about the church and its foundation, which is Jesus Christ, our Lord. Is this? 
and welcome to our worship service this morning. So this week I was working on our website, which is something I've learned way more about than, than I thought I ever would. I dabbled a little bit, but all of a sudden it was necessary for me to figure the whole thing out. So I was looking at that and, and it struck me because on the front page of our website, right up at the top are all of the worship services we have been doing since we have, have been forced to, to take our, our worship online in this format. And I saw there were 10 worship services already on the website, not including this one. So it was 11 weeks ago that suddenly, I think Pastor Michelle and I talked to each other and then called some of the church leaders in the middle of the week and said, we, we can't do it anymore. It isn't safe. And we we stopped our, our regular programming and our regular worship at that time. And so just in those few days, everything changed about how we worshiped and how we were as a church. Now we enter into a time when just when our, we're starting to get it figured out, because if you, if you go back and look at all of those 11 services, just kind of dabble through them, you'll see sort of the evolution of how we figured out you know, how to do video, how to do sound, how to cobble everything together. And so just at this point, when we're starting to, to just fine tune the work of, of doing the best we can with what we have in our video worship, now we are starting the oh-so-slow process of coming back together and, and trying to, to restore all of those things that were lost so suddenly. So all of a sudden, worship's going to start to change. Our, our work of the church and our ministry are, are going to start to change again. And because this is going to be slow and incremental, Every moment is going to take creative new thinking to, to make it fit where we are in that moment. And it may only be a week or so before those rules have changed again and we're doing it in a new way. So in that background, Pastor Michelle and I thought, well, we ought to talk about if, if worship is going to be constantly this moving thing and and who we are as a church is going to be this thing that's constantly transforming in a, in a in dramatic ways that in order to navigate those those roads and 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 those paths we are going to have to have an understanding a clear understanding of who we are as a worshiping people and who we are as a church what we mean when we talk about worship and what we mean when we talk about church. And so last week, Pastor Michelle addressed issues about worship, and this week I want to talk about who we are as a church. And so in order to do that, I'm going to use a, a text from, from Paul's letter to the Corinthians, the, the first letter of the Corinthians. It's found in the 12th chapter Beginning with the, the third verse, I invite you to listen for the word of God. No one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. There are different spiritual gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are different ministries and the same Lord. And there are different activities, but the same God who produces all of them in everyone. A demonstration of the Spirit is given to each person for the common good. A word of wisdom is given by the Spirit to one person, a word of knowledge to another according to the same Spirit, faith to still another by the same Spirit, gifts of healing to another in the one Spirit, performance of miracles to another, prophecy to another, the ability to tell spirits apart to another, different kinds of tongues to another, and interpretation of tongues to another. All these things are produced by the one and same Spirit who gives what he wants to each person. Here ends the reading. So it's become almost cliche to say that the church is not the building. I say that 
and accept the truth of that. But I also know, especially now, after, after some, some serious experience here, that everything that the church is and everything that the church does is a whole lot easier because of the things that we can do and the things that we have in the building. So yes, we can be church and without a building and many churches, many powerful, effective churches are churches without walls. But I sure am grateful for the things that we are able to do because we have those walls. But we still have to understand who we are even though we have this structure and this wall and this name and this place. And so I wanted to use this text because Paul lays out for us the, the spiritual gifts that are offered to us. Now, this is Pentecost Sunday, as, as Pastor Michelle pointed out. As she also said, Pentecost Sunday is recognized as the, the birthday of the church. And in the, in the Pentecost story, we can learn a little bit about the church. We can learn two important things about the church. First of all, that the church is the result of an extraordinary work of the Holy Spirit of God. And the second thing that we can learn with all of the, the language things and, and all of that is that the church is created for everyone. So those are important messages of the church. But in this time when everything's changing and we're trying to decide what to do and how to be church and what a church should look like, we need a, 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 some more specifics about what it is to be church. And, and so that's why I selected this text. It's for this list that, that Paul gives us about the, the different gifts of the Spirit that, that I wanted to use this text. Because Paul says, in, in the Spirit, which we can also say, in the church, there are those given these gifts. These gifts will, will be there amongst the congregation, amongst those who make up the church, the church, the gifts of wisdom, of knowledge, of faith, of healing, of miracles, of prophecy, of telling spirits apart, and of speaking and interpreting tongues. Now, I wanted to take that, that list away from just the language of, of spiritual gifts, but into the language of the activities of the church. And then from there, to offer a, a metaphor for what kind of institution or what type of, of how we could describe what the church is when it's functioning in that way out of this spiritual gift. So for instance, we start with the, the gift of wisdom. Now, the gift of wisdom offers us the possibility for moral and ethical instruction, for us to understand what is right and good to do, what is the, the will of God for us to do. Not just in very prescribed circumstances, but in circumstances that, that the Bible can't see clearly, but we have to make a, a, a God-like decision, a godly decision, as to how to respond and how to act in various circumstances. So the church, one of the important works of the church is to offer that sire of guidance. So the metaphor I offer for that is a consultant firm. A consultant firm has a, a vast amount of knowledge general knowledge about things that, that you're trying to apply in a specific way. Now that, that applies nicely to the church. John Wesley um, talked about different ways that God was revealed. That God was revealed first and foremost in Scripture and then in our tradition. Now by tradition, John Wesley didn't mean the, the, the various acts that we have done over the, over the many centuries of the church, but instead what he meant was that that conversation, that 
2,000 year old conversation as we try to understand the scriptures and understand what Jesus taught and understand what the, the prophet spoke and all the, the things that are offered to us, that, that that conversation builds and grows and every generation grows because of that tradition of conversation that have come before it. And then the, the, the last two pieces were, were our experiences of God. Not just our experience of life, but where we have experienced God personally in our life. And then finally, reason that allows us to compile all these things into, into, a, into a whole. And a consultant does that. They have the, 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 the literature, the foundational things. They have to understand who you are. If we wanted a church consultant, they're going to have to understand the basic rules and, and the basic history of the church. Then they're going to have to, to understand the larger conversation and all of those things that have come into it and how and, and have an experience at that church and finally cobble something together to, to offer good advice. So, so there is something that the church does for people. It offers all of those things and brings it together and offers wisdom to, to the community and to the people who enter the church. The second in the list is knowledge. This is an easy one. Knowledge is, is about knowing things, about knowing scripture and, 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 and knowing the commandments and, and knowing the teachings of Jesus and, and, and knowing the, the, the ways of the church. And so it is an educational function that, that the church can use that spiritual gift of knowledge. And so the simple metaphor is that of a school. And lots of churches, lots of school functions that are a part of our church life. The third on his list is faith. Now, faith is a huge topic, of course, in, in the Bible, but I want to narrow it not so much about the typical conversation, which is faith in, in Jesus Christ that offers uh, redemptive grace, but instead talk about faith as having a faith in something or someone. And so in that respect, the church offers faith, not only the teachings of Jesus Christ, but it offers faith by offering a place of support, a place where you can all come together. How difficult would it be to have a Christian faith when there was no one around you who was Christian, when no one in the entire community in which we serve, other than you, believed in Jesus Christ? And so the, the church offers faith by, by being a place where we can come together and support each other in our belief and, and offer each other a hope in the, in the value of that belief. Now, my metaphor is a, is a tricky one here because I, I landed on the metaphor of a club or a, a, even a country club, if you will. Because a club is something that's, that's founded on some principle for some goal. And it's a, people gather around that to support themselves in that goal. And clubs have an important social function. And, and, and a social function in the church is very important. In fact, that's one of the things that, that we really struggle to find any way to, to offer in these unique times. So in a sense, even though Oftentimes, when, when people want to be negative about the church, they talk about it being a country club. But there is a club-like quality to the church in that we gather around, to, around a common interest, a common faith, a common goals. And, and we support each other and we socialize with each other. So the next on the list is, is healing. This is another easy one. Healing is, is such a fundamental thing that we talk about in the church. Healing of body, healing of, of spirit. And, and so we've always been a, a, a part of that. And a, a fairly simple metaphor that, that is a hospital. A hospital for those who are spiritually dying. A hospital for sometimes for those who are physically dying. But, but a hospital nonetheless that, that offers a healing of, of body and spirit. Miracles as a spiritual gift, I, I, I'm going to depart probably a long way from where Paul would be with this, but I'm going to talk about miracles as mercy, as acts of mercy in the church. Now, when I talk about acts of mercy, what I mean is when somebody just needs something desperately in their life, usually physical needs in their life, food, housing, clothing, 
those sorts of things, fresh water, acts of mercy, offer those things. Now, that doesn't sound miraculous. Writing a check or, or, or buying some groceries and, and, and offering to the food pantry doesn't seem miraculous until you're in a position where you don't know where you're going to get those things. And suddenly, there is an offer to you to have those things, and that's a miraculous thing. So for a metaphor, for, for a, a mercy, I, I offer the soup kitchen as a place where somebody who cannot find anywhere else has a place to sit down and have a meal. The next one is prophecy. Now in the Bible, prophecy is about God speaking to the people, and it's most times it's conversations about injustice amongst the people. And so the, the, the gift of prophecy is the gift of, of speaking to injustice in the world. And so a good metaphor for that for the church is the church as an NGO. Uh, uh, if you're not familiar with that term, uh, a non-governmental organization. These are often organizations who seek justice for people, who lobby governments and, and do other works outside the government to, to not only offer people something they need, but offer them a transformed life, offer them a, a, a life that is just in that they have the, the necessities to, to make life abundant. The last two I get really tricky with, telling spirits apart. Now, Paul probably means telling a, the difference between somebody who's telling you lies and somebody who's telling you the truth in terms of, of God's word. But I want to think about it in a different way in that thinking about what training does. What training does, in order to train someone, you have to understand, first of all, what they can, be, what they can do and, and what their gifts are and what would be the best thing to train them in. You know, we, we, we don't all fit into the same box. And so this idea of training as, as, as a work of the church is to say, Okay, you have this spiritual gift. I see that you have this spiritual gift, which is part of telling spirits apart. Now, here's what you need to do to, to develop those spiritual gifts. So as a, as a metaphor, I use the metaphor of university, or you could also use the metaphor of a trade school. Those people who take people from a lot of different fields and say, okay, we see that you want to understand better how to do these things that you are gifted in. Here's what we can offer. And the church does that for people. We try to understand what your spiritual gifts are and try to develop those so that they can know its fullest potential to the work of God. And then the last one, speaking in tongues, which has all kinds of, of, of baggage. And we talk about it in the United Methodist Church very differently than you might in, in other more charismatic expressions of Christianity. And I really want to lean on it more toward the story of Pentecost, the Acts 2 story that we put into our, into our video today for, for our kids' video, in that speaking in tongues is a work of evangelism, the work of sharing the good news of Jesus Christ. And to do that well... The church needs to be able to speak in a language that other people understand. I mean, I can talk about soteriology and eschatology and, and, and these kinds of things, these words I learned in, in, in seminary, and that doesn't get me anywhere with a lot of people. Not only do I have to have a language that they can understand, but I have to understand them so that I know what, what their need is. That's how I can effectively share the good news of Jesus Christ in a way that's going to move people. And so the best people for that, and a great metaphor, I think, for the, for the church is as an advertising agent, as advertisers. That, that in some ways we are an advertising agent. I remember I was in a, a preaching class in seminary, and uh the, the professor showed us a series of commercials. She said, watch commercials, especially commercials for, for, for big companies with lots of money, because they do a ton of research to figure out what people really want, what their deepest needs and, and, and understanding of themselves are, so that they can manipulate that in those commercials. We need to have that same sort of understanding of people. 
We can take the things that are in commercials and say, so this is where people's heads are in according to their research. Well, how does the gospel of Jesus Christ apply to that kind of need in somebody's life? And so that's a, it, it doesn't sound like something that a church would be an advertising firm, but that is something that in many ways we have to do if we're going to be effective messengers of the good news of Jesus Christ. Now, first of all, this list can't be all-inclusive. Second of all, I would say that any metaphor is highly limited in its usage, but all in all, I think the, the church does all of these things. And so in the end, it's the end of this conversation to simply say, well, the church is all of those things. I think there's something more that we can say about the church. I think we can talk about the church in, in, a, in a single metaphor that then brings all of these elements in. Now, Paul uses a, a wonderful metaphor, and I use it often in my teaching and preaching, and it, it actually lays it out in the, in the verses that immediately follow the ones that I shared with you today, and that's it's a, the church is a body, and each of us a, a, a part, a member of the body, and we all work together in different ways. And that's a terrific metaphor. The problem with that metaphor in this moment, as I said, all metaphors have their limit. The problem with that metaphor in this moment is that we're all torn apart. How do we function as a body when we're all torn apart, when our arms aren't connected to our, to our shoulders, which aren't connected to our, to our necks, and, and all of these things just seem to be too far flung? So I landed on a, on, on a different metaphor. Once again, reminding you, all metaphors have their limits, but it is the metaphor of a nation. And I fall on that because a nation is something formed around a common purpose, a kind of common ideal. Particularly in our nation, we can, we can look at the, at, at the Declaration of Independence, the, the Constitution of the United States, especially in the preamble, and we can see in their language about what the founders of the nation believed was fundamentally who we were as a people and what did we want to accomplish as a nation. And there are many nations and many people and nations who are, are lost from their shores or outside their boundaries. There are, there are people of this country all over the world doing all kinds of things that are still deeply connected to the foundational thing that, that we do here as, as a country, as a nation. So we don't all have to be in one place to be one nation, to be one people, to be one people of God. And now our nation is unique in that most nations have laws, and certainly the church has laws. But at the same time, in the power of Jesus Christ, we don't have a police force making sure that, that, we, that we keep those laws. We don't have somebody. We are, we are called upon out of our faith to believe in, in the head of our church, Jesus Christ. And through Jesus Christ, a, a vision of, of God sustained in the Holy Spirit, that those laws are what we need to do not out of threat of, of eternal damnation or imprisonment, but because that is what life is. It is what God intended us to be, that we should be a nation that lives under this law of love that God has given us, and that where we fell down, God will bring us back in, in the grace of Jesus Christ. And this nation is held together in one Holy Spirit, And so I, I offer that all of these things that we have done, consulting and teaching and, and, and supporting and caring, our works of mercy and justice, our, our works of, of teaching and, and lifting one another up, and especially our work of sharing the good news of Jesus Christ. As a nation, we can do this all over the world. 
we are a, a, a nation in one way without borders. But as I started this conversation, we also are a nation that when we can do this together, when we can stand shoulder to shoulder, when we can do this in our, in our church buildings, in our communities, face to face, hand in hand, then they, they are done mo most powerfully. But as a nation, we can be far apart, but under one spirit, under one God, in communion with one another, wherever we are. one of the great teachers of the early church, called the Holy Spirit the bond of love between the Father and the Son. And so whether we are a church, a nation, a body, whatever you want to call us, may we be bonded together in the Holy Spirit, a bond that cannot be torn apart by, by space, by walls, by diseases, by whatever might try to pull us apart. Pray this in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, hope of the world. Amen.
All right, go eat some pie.